today I'm just going to very quickly go over um, our new helicopter, which looks a lot like the old one. So we'll kind of go around and show you what's similar and what's not. So this is obviously the front of the helicopter. One of the first things you'll notice actually is that it has two spikes sticking out of the front. Um, those are actually wire strike kits. Our old helicopter used to have them. Um, but that is in case we get too close to power lines and need to cut them. So this will actually cut the power lines out of our way and save the crew. Um, the other piece that you'll notice is compared to our other one, there's a big hump in the front of the aircraft. Um, this aircraft actually comes with a weather radar. So it has an active weather radar on board. So as you go around, you can look at the cockpit and you'll notice that there's no analog, no, there really aren't any analog gauges anymore. And so it's what we call a glass cockpit. So it has redundant systems throughout, meaning that it has multiple uh, systems in case one fails. Um, it does have an autopilot, so it allows them to enter coordinates and fly it, and the aircraft will fly itself. So, um, which is very obviously just like what we have in our jet aircraft. Helicopter autopilots are relatively new in this state. Uh, I think there's only a couple of them, but I'm not positive off the top of my head. Um, as you move backwards, this is all very similar. This is Kayla. She came with the aircraft. <laughs> she is one of our OB flight nurses. And who's back there? Jen O'Connell as well. And Mark Long is way back there. So what we do have here is increased patient care space. Um, Probably the coolest part about this helicopter versus our old one is that this aircraft was purpose built for us. And so it is brand new off the line. And so we have contracted with Metro Aviation to continue services. It has lots of antennas uh, because it is fully satellite tracked. It actually has satellite broadband internet built into the aircraft. Um, we actually have pushed to talk satellite so they can talk to their um, operational control center in Shreveport, Louisiana by just hitting a button. Uh, it also has a backup camera, which we've installed. Uh, the, uh, so as you pull back, this is where it starts to look a little different. The EC-145 has a different types of engines. They're a little bit bigger. Overall, we gained about three to 400 pounds of empty weight on each is what we're estimating. We'll know more once we start flying it but we're estimating about 300 to 400 extra empty weight pounds of capability, which gives us more power and allows us to get to places farther away with more fuel on board, which is wonderful for us. One cool part that you'll notice is actually, we blacked out the windows and while it looks really cool, it actually decreases the sunlight that transmits through the uh, aircraft onto the patient and our crew. So we're hoping that it's a little bit more temperate inside. The pilots did not get tinted windows just like regular driving. So as you move back here, you'll notice the tail is actually higher off the ground um, because it has a different type of tail rotor system. The system we had before is called the Fenestron. This is an exposed open tail rotor, um, but the clamshell doors are just like our old helicopter. Um, there is actually, as we said, they, we had it installed. So they have a backup camera so that our pilots can actually see what we're doing if we are outside the aircraft while it's running. So of course, when we actually run during uh, a mission and keep the aircraft on, the pilot wants to know what's going on behind him so he can see. Um, those are kind of the big things. It's got a lot of new technologies on it. One of the other technologies we had installed is actually a wireless communication system. So if our crew comes out and they, um, it's called the Axness system. And so if the crew comes out with their helmets on and it's hooked into the Axness system, they can maintain contact with the pilot. So if they're under rotor blades that are running still, they can still communicate. A lot of people are used to seeing these in movies and stuff because they see search and rescue and everybody else using this system. Um, it doesn't seem a lot of medical flight systems use it, but if we land on scene and keep the helicopter running, it's nice to have the crew still be able to talk to the pilot. So as long as they keep their helmets on, they're able to work in that space. It's very similar looking. It was meant to be. We weren't trying to make a lot of changes. Um, the biggest issue is we get a lot more power and hopefully in the future, a lot more capability. So we're pretty excited about it. So this was just a meet and greet for the crew so they could see what their new system looked like.